I'm really excited to introduce you to Ralph, whose last name I can't pronounce. He's the um, one of two of Studio Drift, and they flew the drones over the convention center for the 20th anniversary of Art Basel Miami Beach. And their drones uh, are called Franchise Freedom, which I'm sure everybody's seen on the internet now. It was at Burning Man, it premiered in Basel five years ago at the Faena, and we are now with Ralph looking at his very first work called Fragile Future that he did while he was in the Eindhoven Design School with Lanaka. And I want to ask some questions. So tell us a little bit about this very early work and the genesis of this piece. Sure, so um, this is actually my uh, partner's Lonneke's uh, graduation project. So we, uh, we studied uh, in Eindhoven at the academy and we um, were always in conversations during the course of our career about the differences between nature and science fiction as I'm a science fiction junkie and she's really into uh, natural processes. We always find the overlap in our conversations of these two extremely different worlds that we both find interesting. And um, at a certain point she was, she was playing with uh, an LED uh, on her table and a dandelion. She found out that the stem of a dandelion is exactly the same size of an LED. And so she uh, painstakingly with tweezers started replacing um, those LEDs on a, on a LED, like gluing them on, see per seed. And then she saw that the light was breaking so beautifully through the hairs of this, uh, of this natural, natural element that you know, we started thinking about how can we construct that um, in, in a way that, that uh, where you see this merger between tech and nature. And so we came up with this three-dimensional model that you, uh, module that you see here. So the bottom part you see here, like it's, it's two cubes basically. And with that system, you can interconnect it um, like here and with, with plus and minus points and, and the current will always run correctly through the system. So it's actually an active, conductive wire, three-dimensional wiring system, lighting up all the individual pieces. So, and, um, and the cool thing about it is we can, we can do endless variations with this. So we've been working on this for like 15 years and we're still just discovering different sculptures we can make with it and it just, just never gets tired. I mean, I'm, uh, I, I keep love working on the piece. Tell us about the process of gathering the dandelions and how this piece actually fits into a larger narrative about the blocks, about yes. the world being in blocks. So there's two things. There's how do we fit into nature? How does nature fit into our system? Is there a larger? So um, what you, what you um, yeah, let me, let me tell a little bit uh, indeed about the natural, natural, the harvesting what we do. Yes, so, exactly. So it used to be twice a year, weirdly enough, but I think it's changed because of climate change. We're not 100% certain, but now it, it went up to, like it's changed to once in, once in a year. Um, that the, like the Netherlands is just exploding with dandelions. So we we harvest them in the field life and pick them, um, and then we store them, dry them, and uh, so our whole team goes out and we make sure we have enough for the year. We're definitely not using them all, but we pick around like 15,000 of them. 15,000. Yeah, it's like. Because wow. you also, we also want the right ones, right? So some dry, don't dry up nice and you know, like some fall apart. So um, there's a selection process that we do after that. And uh, it's, um, yeah, it's always the best time of the year because you're in the nature and you're reconnecting, you're out there with your whole team. Everybody's having a blast. We create a picnic around it. And um, so if you're ever interested to come out on a, on a field trip, like uh, we do once a year, let us know, drop us a line. Um, I'll tell a little bit about the, the block system that you see here. So this is um, the two-to-one dimension that we use in, in a lot of our work, actually. Almost everything, um, even, we, even now we have a different piece of pace, whereby we use our swarming algorithms that we've been studying. Um, we translated that into a group of 30,000 like, same dimensional blocks that are flying around and swarming. And um, for us it's about the human um, desire to structure everything. It's like a representation of uh, trying to make everything as logical as possible. And, and the blo the, the, this block shape fits so perfectly in, in each other that you can make endlessly complicated variations and shapes with this most simple element. And it almost feels like an algorithm that's morphing. 
Thank you. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's that, you know. Um, and it, why copper, by the way? Well, I mean, it's phosphor bronze because um, oh, it's it's a very conductive material. Also, it's there's phosphor in it because then it becomes more stiff. If it was just bronze, it would be too flexible, and we couldn't bend it. So it has a functional reason. And um, nope. even even the design, like the design of the exact shape, is because we we want our light sources in a certain place, our interconnectivity points. And this is actually the only way how to do it that you don't get a, um, a short circuit, right? So it's it's um, it's also functional. Uh, uh, the other thing that's so interesting about this piece is um, how it relates to their larger practice because it's using technology to reflect nature and how do we um, how does nature control us and how do we control nature and it, it's somewhere this yin yang balancing act where uh, technology is just trying to interpret nature but in reality the drone show was actually cancelled last night because mother nature wouldn't allow it so we're always being somehow reminded that there's a stronger force of nature um, but I wanted to also mention there's a book if you want to learn more there's a book by fight and their very first book after 15 years of being together they finally sat down long enough to make a book and uh, I'm really excited about it the last couple of nights we flew franchise freedom what is uh our drone performance art piece, whereby we implement swarm algorithms that we've been studying since 2008. That actually um, came to be because we were uh, we came up with the fly lights, another piece of carpets that we that we do, uh, and we thought, how can we have that algorithm of that swarming behavior that we studied physically in the sky? So we started attaching lights on the drones and um, to our conversations with engineers. Um, that became a, a very large industry. So the whole like drone movement that you see of like logos in the sky, what I really hate, came came actually from an idea to have an art piece as French's Freedom with the swarming machine learning algorithms in the sky. Um, it's also about murmuration and how things move. And maybe you can speak about this idea about well, human versus natural behavior which yeah. also relates back to Fragile Future. All the work has this through line of this narrative where the artists are really looking at how things move, how things function, in whether it's the algorithm well, or the system or the blocks. Yeah, or, I mean, the, the, the studying swarming behavior came from the idea that, you know, if you look at a social group um, as, as, as we are, um, we, we don't realize that we're sacrificing a lot of freedom to be safe, right? Um, so we asked ourselves the question, where do you want to be in society? Do you want to be outside of society, uh, free, but like, um, um, you know, open to all sorts of dangers? Or do you, are you sacrificing that freedom for this illusion of freedom that we're living in, um, to live in a social structure? And, you know, we all struggle with this. Um, uh, and, and we're all making sacrifices to live in that, in that group. But we're not realizing that we're making those sacrifices. We're, we just, um, yeah, always, there's always a tension of, of do I belong here, I'm, I need to do something else. And once you understand that, you can put it in place and you, could, you can work with it. The swarm algorithm, it is a perfect translation of this illusion of freedom. So if you look at nature, you see a free flying swarm of birds and you think you're looking at the most free thing you've ever seen in life, but it's actually like pinned down to uh, a lot of rules and, and there's absolutely no freedom within that swarm whatsoever. So, it's that, it's that visualization that we find very interesting.